So let's let's talk about pushing boxes, because why not, eh? Pushing boxes. And if you if you had me in grade eleven, I probably did an example problem like this with you. Then I'm going to call this example one: pushing boxes. Um, but that's okay. If maybe you don't remember from grade eleven. It's nice to have a little refresher. You still have our, you know, you laminated them and you, you wallpapered your locker with them. Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh, that's awesome. All right. Um, <laughs> So if we've got two boxes, let's say that we have a pusher, and I'm not going to dress this up with a fancy story or anything like that. I'm just going to say that arrow represents somebody pushing on some boxes, okay? And I'm going to say that the pusher is able to push uh, with 18.0 newtons. So no fancy story, no, no little girl trying to get the boxes to grandmother's house and get there before the wolf arrives or any, none, none of that sort of stuff, okay? <laughs> I just want to go through a very, very simple scenario. I want to say this is mass 1 and this is mass 2. I'm going to say that mass 1 has a mass of 10.0 kilograms, and mass 2 has a mass of 5.00 kilograms. Okay? So each of them has a mass. I should really define the, uh, the directional reference frame. So I think I'd like to say that up is positive. I'll keep that in the frame. Up is positive. Down is negative. To the right will be positive, and to the left will be negative just so that we can work that into our figuring later on. And the first question I'd like to pose is, what's the acceleration of the system? So I'll put it in writing. What's the acceleration of the system? And I'm going to need some help with the calculators here, OK, in just a, mo a few moments. Well, let, let's not rely exclusively on Alex. He's quick on the draw, but you know this isn't the old West. Everybody should be in it together. Um, so, ladies at the back, pull out the calculators. Come on. Oh, please. You're in a physics class without a calculator? That's ridiculous. That's like trying to run some Olympic race with no legs. Oh, wait a minute. Somebody did that. But you, you need to get a calculator. All right. So. F net, in this case, for the, the system, I'm going to make some qualifications here just to, to uh, make this a reminder type of question rather than a, a I'm going to get you type of question. Let's make this scenario frictionless. So we'll say that it's a frictionless surface. And so in this case, if I draw a free body diagram, it's a combined system, mass 1 and mass 2. It would have a mass of mass 1 plus mass 2, first of all. But the actual forces involved, I would have a normal force. I would have a gravitational force. And since this is frictionless, uh, what forces are acting in the horizontal? Yeah, just the applied force. So seeing as this box isn't going to fly off into the air nor crash into the earth, um, F applied really is F net. Remember, a picture can always, a free body diagram can always help you to, to yield an F net equation. In this case, it's the simplest of equations. F net is equal to F applied. Okay, F net is equal to F applied. Or F net is equal to 18.0 newtons. Now the mass of the system I already wrote is going to be m1 plus m2, but we'll put it over here in the this problem solving area. M, m, sys, m system is equal to m1 plus m2. Now I've chosen some nice round numbers, 10 kilograms and 5 kilograms, so I'm just going to add them up in my head. And I end up getting 15.0 kilograms. So the mass is 15 kilos, 5 plus 10. And if I want to find the acceleration of the system, if I know the net force on the system and I know the mass of the system, how would you guys find the acceleration of the system? F equals yeah, F equals MA. Only I would probably isolate for A first before I do anything, because it's such a nice, uh, easy little equation. I'd probably say A cis is equal to F net over M cis, because it's 
the, the system's mass, not to be confused with mass one or mass two, it's the combined mass. And some people don't like to write m cis, they'll actually write out the m1 plus the m2 in the denominator. That's, you know, it's a stylistic thing, it's your choice. You can do it that way if you want to. All right, so f net is equal to 18.0 newtons, 15.0 kilograms. What is it? Oh, I love it. Oh shoot, I dropped my decimal. Um, 1.20 meters per second squared. You got it. And since it's the right, we've already defined the right as being positive. For those people that are still concerned about unit cancellations, remember, newtons are equivalent to kilogram meters per second squared. So if I have newtons divided by kilograms, the kilograms get cancelled out, and you do definitely get the meters per second squared. It always works out. Units always work out. So you can always check your work. But maybe you're not concerned about that. Nice to see it in action, though. So I might do a follow-up question. I might say, all right, so I know the acceleration of the system now. What I would like to know is what the net force is on each individual mass. So let's, let's put that in writing. What is the net force on each mass? And as everybody knows, F net for a particular mass, let's say F net for mass one, is equal to, as Alex said just a second ago, that object's mass times that object's acceleration, F equals ma. Now we have to make a recognition here that the acceleration of mass one is going to be the same as the acceleration of the system because it's a part of the system, right? So we're going to make the assumption that somebody reading this question is able to decipher that. If you want to, you could make a note that a1 equals a cis. You could. I, I wouldn't require that you do though. Anyways, at, th at this point, we could sub in our values. Mass one is equal to uh, 10 kilograms. Acceleration of the system is 1.20 meters per second squared. And this is an easy one. 10 times 1.2. 12.0. Yeah, 12 so 12.0 12 newtons is the net force on mass 1. And if we tackle mass 2, it's pretty much the same process, making the same assumption that mass 2 is going to accelerate along with the system, so at 1.20 meters per second squared. that all those people drop the course. This is a sweetheart's topic. We miss them. Hopefully they'll come back and watch all these videos and they'll be like, oh, this is good. I miss physics. 5 times 1.2, what do you get? 6.00. Yeah. 6.00 newtons. And again, positive 6.00 newtons. So we have the net force of 6 newtons on mass 2 and 12 newtons on mass 1. Uh, and actually, do you think it's a coincidence here? I'll leave this for you to ponder. What's 12 plus 6? Holy moly. I've seen that number before. Okay. So th there, there might be something to that. I, I don't want to hang my hat on it just yet, but there might be something to it. I do want to follow up with a question C, though. Oh man, I want to follow up with the question, what is the magnitude of the action-reaction force pair between the two boxes? So you have your page in front of you, but I'm going to say, I'm just going to write it out. Um, why did I start with an F? I don't know, I, I, I feel like saying something about what, what the F is doing there, but um, what is the magnitude? Oh yeah, I'm it's like a Freudian slip. I'm thinking about forces, probably. Action, reaction, contact force between the two boxes. Now, for that, we will likely need a free body diagram. So I want to draw both boxes again, just as FPDs. We've got our normal force on box one. We've got our FG on box one. Same for box two, normal and gravity. We also said that uh, box one was being pushed by somebody and we call that F applied. Remember, box one is butting up against box two, though. 
So if box 1 nudges up against bo box 2, what force would have to be attached to box 2? This being box 1, this being box 2. Force of 1 acting on 2. Yeah, force of 1 acting on 2. So force of 1 acting on 2. And if there's a force of 1 acting on 2, it stands to reason that there's also going to be a force of 2 acting on 1. Now, there might be more horizontal forces. Actually, there would be more horizontal forces here if friction was involved. So I'd have to have force of kinetic friction acting on box 2 and force of kin kinetic friction acting on box 1. But remember, we, we made it simple. We kept friction out of the equation this time. So, fine. Um, the other thing I want you to remember is that whenever you have a, an FBD, you can always set an FBD, a free body diagram, equal to the net force. And so I could say F net for, for box 1 we said previously was 12.0 newtons, but you could also say that F net for box one, and now I'm only gonna write out the X components because I can see that the Y components will cancel out. So really and truly this is F net for box one in the X direction only. I could say F net for, for mass one is force of two acting on one plus force of five. What would the F net equation be? I mean, I could remember I could say F net for mass 2 is equal to 6.0 newtons. What would the F net equation be for mass 2? Or for, uh, yeah, the second box. It's a really easy equation. Yeah. Force of 1 acting on 2. Yeah. Not plus anything, because it's the only x component of force here. Or it's the only uh, x uh, force vector. Force of 1 acting on 2. That's it. So this time it actually ends up being really easy to figure out what force of 1 on 2 is because if we already know F net 2, then we automatically know force 1 on 2. But we're going to do a check in just a second. So I could say, all right, so therefore, at least on the right-hand side, therefore force of 1 acting on 2 is equal to 6.0 newtons. And that's an easy one. But I'd like to do the left-hand side just as a check, but also because it's a little bit more complicated. And, and uh, you know, as a rule, it seems that things are always more complicated than this, so we'll do it. Uh, force of 2 on 1, I'm going to isolate it. I'm going to get it by itself. So I could say that force of 2 acting on 1, taking the F applied over to the other side, I would say is equal to F net for mass 1 minus F applied. <coughs> and now if I sub in my values, F net 1 was equal to positive 12.0 newtons minus F applied, we said, was 18 newtons, right? minus 8 bracket 18.0 newtons and 12 minus 18 is negative 6 and lo and behold force of 2 on 1 is equal but opposite in direction to force of 1 on 2 it works making an equation using free body diagrams is, is going to be consistent so long as we follow the rules and so what we could say I'm not going to say that this is a therefore statement but if we're just looking for the magnitude of the tension force, the or sorry, the compression force, the contact force rather, uh, we could say that force of one on two, at least its magnitude, is equal to the magnitude of force of two on one, which is equal to 6.0 newtons, which is what we were looking for in the first place. Does that sound good? I like I like those box problems. How many people saw like that exact same question? Maybe even with similar numbers in grade 11. Okay. Well, I know you did, Chris. You just saw last semester. And I used the same numbers last semester. <laughs> Chris is like, oh my gosh, I'm sleeping here. Sorry, Chris. I'll try to make it a lot harder next time. All right. How many people want to see the pulley problem that Dante is so worked up about? No, 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 no. That's what we're doing, so sorry. All right. I shouldn't have asked. <laughs> Oh, I should stop recording too.